technically we have a movie to to to, to review. Predator Two. We did Predator last time. Uh, did you get a chance to watch Predator Two? I did. I did indeed. Yeah, I watched it last night for the probably ninety fifth time. <laughs> Well, this think? is your favorite Predator movie, right? It is not. I think part one is still my favorite. Part but one? I still really like, like part two comes in kind of just behind it, I would say. I'd agree with that. I was watching it and like I was like, so the one thing I noticed is I felt like this this one went in way more of a comic booky direction. So you're right, this is set in LA, and the people he's hunting are drug dealers, which in, in the beginning are drug dealers, which I thought was Big a point. fun smart way to do it um because i mean drug dealers it's a turf war like the cops aren't going to notice it's a it's a smart way to like build tension in in the in the film without having people being like wait a minute wouldn't people notice a giant alien running through la killing everybody um but it definitely went in that more comic booky direction and it like was a little bit sillier i guess is the word yeah there was a few parts that went it went a little bit far, but it, it had like there was so many great moments in it. Like the opening fight scene was good. Um, you know the part in the the meat packing plant or whatever. The, mm -hmm. That was cool. That there was like a whole lot of cool scenes. And something that I don't know if you realize, but the movie technically is set in the future. It's kind of hard to tell because so much time has gone by. But it came out in 1990, but it was set in mm -hmm. 1997, so it's supposed to be seven years in the future. But right. now that we're 2024, on, you can't even tell because it's still like 30 years old <laughs> well do you know what's funny because i noticed um the guy in the subway who shoots who, who pulls the gun out of his briefcase yeah um, that's bernard getz do you know the story of bernard getz oh yeah yeah the yeah that happened in 1984 which was like six years before that movie so yeah. it's kind of funny that they're like looking back and also looking forward yeah now that you mentioned it that was in new york but it was yes. yeah i was definitely touching on that that honestly that's the the, if I had to pick a part of the movie I don't like, it's that subway scene, which is unfortunate because I even read somewhere that like they wanted to put that in just because like it sounded like it'd be cool with the the strobe lights. But mm -hmm. I just found you couldn't see what the hell happened. The predator kills like twenty people, but it's so dark that you can't. And it's like you that strobe happened. light. You don't see what's happening. I would like to see someone like on YouTube just go through and like chop up all the the frames where it turns black so what you could see see the sequence of see events. exactly what happens like you get like a little stop motion slideshow yeah. play. it's just like it was such a cool moment that it, like on paper it like seems like it'd be cool but uh that's the only part of the movie that just annoys me because you have like three minutes of not even being able to tell what's happening it's just like flashing images but i don't want to criticize it too much and some of the things like the how that big spaceship at the end somehow is in the sewer like i'm gonna get there with no one noticing like they, they dug up the well, road like, and like re and resealed it or it was there before they built the city and no one noticed when they were laying the foundation that they you know, just kind of appeared there yeah it's some of it it kind of you know strains strains logic but but for the most part like it was very well done and i like how it's almost like the mike harrigan the main character danny glover he was almost like more badass than Arnold. Like Arnold, for the most part, was just trying to run, get away from the predator. Yeah. Where this guy is like flat out chasing. He's like down. grizzled and like trying to like solve the thing. And he's like, ah, oh, I have to, I have to say, I don't know who decided that Gary Busey was the perfect replacement for Arnold. Like, I don't know who looked at those two pictures and was like, yep, that's who we're getting, <laughs> Gary Busey. They're definitely going in a different direction. But <laughs> his character is definitely memorable. He's it kind it of like is. It apple. absolutely is. His death is memorable too. You know what? I agree with you. They went in a completely, I feel like they were like looking at Predator 1 and they were like, this is the direction that it went in. We're going to go completely the opposite direction. We're going to like yeah. make it bigger. The city is bigger. The scope is bigger. Like the, the, the mask is, I would say, better. Yeah, it was a slightly, slightly different mask because it was a different Predator, but it was still. Well, and you can see its throat easy. moving and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you could even just like the little bits around his nose and stuff, like were like quivering. Like they, I think just the in the five years or whatever it was, the uh, or four years, like the technology, maybe the effects, or maybe they had more budget or something, and they make it just that little bit better. Yeah, I mean, you could put that. You could, you could, maybe not the whole movie. You could release that movie yesterday, and it would be on par with the effects you yeah. see in movies today. I feel like. Yeah, absolutely. It, and it was kind of like. Even just like the pacing, the style, the story, like 
because the first one was kind of like three acts. There was like the opening big action scene, then the middle was the guys getting picked off one by one, and then the and end then was Arnold him. fighting back. In this one, it was like broken down. There was so it just seemed there like was there a was lot more. We had Bill Paxton in there for a little while. Yeah, we had him. We had the whole like government agency going after. We had the drug war. We had you know meeting with the um the Jamaican I love the Jamaicans. And, and um you know those torture scenes and then yeah and then we had the Bill Paxton storyline and we even got into some stuff with like um we saw more of like the predator and his rules like how he doesn't he kill the kid. a lot more like the, even though the kid has a gun it's not a real gun but he doesn't touch the kid he doesn't touch the pregnant woman so we get some more insight into that and and there's just there's like the the scene here where they have that the Jamaicans have that uh, Colombian guy hung upside down. And they're like torturing. Him. Voodoo magic. Yeah, they have like that whole scene where Predator kills people. Then there's like the subway scene, and there's just so many more. Like, what do you like, think he's doing with it. the skins? Like, I just wondered: is he making like human skin rugs? Is he like yeah, like hanging them up in his home? Because later you see, like, you see his skulls they have on like some sort of display. But yeah, I don't know what he's doing with the. The skins, I guess they take them home and stuff them on their home planet and put them in a museum or something. They really never explain that. <laughs> I, I like that. I'm I'm gonna go with that. They they like stuff them and put them up there, and there's just like people like there's Arnie just like or like Bill Dukes is just there with a rail gun in, in their world. Yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting too in part two because you get to see him fight like gang members, but then you get to see him fight police. Mm -hmm. and it also shows like even on the subway like there's some like criminals there with guns but there's also the civilians like the bernie gets guy that just has there are the like all right you're in the wrong place at the wrong time but you have a gun <laughs> therefore you're an aggressor i guess i'm an aggressor too so he doesn't either the predator doesn't understand like he doesn't understand that oh the the criminals had the guns and then the good people had guns too to protect themselves he either doesn't care or he can't tell the difference he just sees humans with guns therefore their targets well or if you think about it in terms of hunting i mean i've never hunted a goddamn day in my life so i don't know but i assume if you're going hunting you're not trying to shoot the pregnant females and you're not trying to shoot the children because you want to make sure the population stays up so that you can keep hunting them you're probably you're probably going to try and hunt specifically the ones that look like the the deer with the biggest horns and i yeah. guess humans with guns are the deer with the biggest horns and I guess that's why they they also they go after like it says they they go wherever there's conflict. It's usually like soldiers or gang members. It's kind of like the toughest, most violent guys because really yeah. they can just go they can just go in a farmer's field until they see a hunter like a farmer with a gun off. and pick them off. But that doesn't count, right? They go for like yeah, like the deer with the or the moose with the biggest antlers, which would be Arnold Schwarzenegger, like the just like the biggest the guys who would potentially po uh, pose the biggest threat. The conflicts are like hunting zones for them, or it's like hunting season where the conflicts are happening. Yeah. And as you'll see in part three, which I guess we're going to do for the next oh, yeah. show, they, they kind of take that in a different direction. It'll be interesting uh, to see what you oh, think. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. they touch in part two, they say like, oh, he was in, uh, he was in Beirut and I um, can't remember what other places they listed, but any place <laughs> where there's um, some sort of... <laughs> Not necessarily war, but just like conflict going on. So you know, gang members fighting other gang members fighting the police. Yeah. It's like that's violent enough that it just attracts their attention. And um yeah, the I really like that opening. There's a lot of movies I don't like how when they they open the movie with an action scene just to that really doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the movie, just to kind of show the main characters doing something exciting. Some of those I don't really like. Like in Hannibal, I hate that opening scene with a shootout because it doesn't seem like it fits the style of the movie. Fair enough. Yeah, especially in Hannibal. It's such a like left turn from what ends yeah, up. Yeah, like it turns into like a diehard movie where it like it shouldn't. But in, in the Predator movies, both of them, I like the opening fight scenes where it's just showing the, the conflict and they're well done. And and it, it obviously it's not a real world like Los Angeles in the future or past is never that bad but i just like their portrayal of it where it's like it's just complete anarchy like police are losing control it's just like gangs ruling the streets and the police are doing what they can like it was a it was cool for that movie but it was hardly realistic like you said it was a definite like cartoon portrayal of it it was cartoony which i mean i, I i'm not 100 percent mad at i feel like 
that's the route you want to go. I'm curious to see what what where Predator Three takes place in. But like, yeah, they could have gone the horror route, which is like, okay, there's this invisible thing that's running around killing people, or they could have gone the like Saturday morning cartoon where like there's this thing and it's just wasting everybody, and here's a cop who's gonna have to take them. Yeah, it was, it it, it like it was definitely borderline cartoony, but it never went. I'm like kind of the more modern Predator movies, almost they take a lot of it too far because they can do things easier. Where I mm. like it, where like the Predator kind of, like he's a hunter and he's skilled. So he kind of comes in, even if there's multiple guys, like he kind of surveys so he knows what he's doing. So he can then jump down and take them out one by one. But it's not just like full on, um, like where everything he does looks cool, where he's like all of a sudden becomes like a ninja and you know, yeah, he's like, like style takes him out. It's like although it's, they did have him perched on a ledge. I love that scene of him perched on a yeah. ledge. That that cover did when he got hit by lightning, that got that was a bit uh cartoony. <laughs> Honestly, if I could go back and edit the movie, I would cut that part out. But cut that <laughs> part. It's very like Batman Saturday morning cartoon yeah. versus first watching or, uh, or spawn or any of the other. Yeah guys that, that like to perch on the edge of, edge of things but yeah overall i would say like it, there's a lot of hate for that movie online like even among predator fans be, i don't yeah. get it because it's like it's not it's quite as just good as, as the first. good as one i'd say like i kept trying to decide if the silliness made it worse or better than one and i feel like it makes it just as good it's, it's a different story but like i didn't enjoy it any less than i enjoyed one yeah i would like yeah, I would give it like a point one or something less than the first. Or it wasn't like if I had to pick part one's better, but part two is still like very good movie. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I'd I'd probably go with uh yeah. If we're going by the point system, then I'd give it like an eight point eight, eight point nine. Yeah. Whereas I gave nine, Predator one a nine. If we're going by like just regular grades, yeah, they're both nines to me. Yeah, yeah. I think they're. Uh, it's definitely a movie that's overlooked. Uh, Predators is what the next one's called. That one's definitely more divisive, and I'm still oh. kind of on the fence. Um, it's kind of like every time I watch it, I I hate it, and then I watch it again, and it's like ah, actually it's pretty cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna watch it again over the next day or two, uh, so the next show we can review that and kind of discuss our thoughts on it. I'm interested to see as a newer Predator uh, uh, person uh, what, what you're. Well, I think of three. I'm very excited. Yeah, I, I'm 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 excited to see where it takes place. Who's in it? Like. I'm going to go into this completely blind. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be expected to be like surprised and entertained. <laughs> I'm sure you will be. All right. <laughs> see you guys later. Oh.